Now from Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of Liberia to the likes of Kolinda Kitarovic of um, Croatia and more recently to Suad Abderrahim of Tunis. We're asking ourselves in Nigeria, are we ready for women in leadership and at the helm of affairs? You know, but more importantly, are we ready for a female president? Today on Hello Nigeria, we have a very young woman, a 39-year-old presidential aspirant who's female, something that we've seen happening before in Nigeria, but it's never gotten to the finals. Now, are we ready for that in Nigeria? Answering this question for us is Eunice Atwejide, who is running for president in Nigeria. Good afternoon, and it's good to have you. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So why did you decide to run for president in Nigeria? Um, mostly because I realized I am ready. I actually had a 10 to 12 year plan, like from now, but over the course of January to June, where uh, our political party was chasing all the seemingly independent candidates to bring them together, to run under the same platform, so there will be a front to reckon with. When we couldn't do that, we had to go back and look at all the things, all the opportunities, all the people we had been chasing, and why we couldn't bring them together. And we realized it's not possible to bring people together who do not share the same interests, unless you are in the front and they are seeing that you are doing it, and then you are telling them authoritatively it can be done. So we now looked at it, and while I was thinking, oh my God, it's not time yet, it's not time yet, the rest of the crew were saying, it is time, Eunice. You are ready. You just don't know how ready you are. And if you do not stop being afraid, you would never know. So I thought about it very deeply, and then I realized, yes, I was really afraid. I was afraid of being mocked. I was afraid of being ridiculed. I'd been threatened a few times. Forget it. Nigerians will never vote a woman. And have you been mocked and ridiculed? Yes. But then I stopped being afraid of it. And now that I'm not afraid of it, it <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm mocked and ridiculed. My job is to sell myself to the electorate, make them understand that it's not about my gender. It's not about my tribe. It's really about Nigeria. It's about being able to love Nigeria and love Nigerians and give Nigeria the opportunity to do well for all of us to come together and save our country together and show ourselves some love and show our country the way forward. There are good Nigerians. And I decided, yes, it's time because I'm ready. I'm ready to work with other people. I'm ready to face the whatever the circumstances are. I am ready to deal with them. I am ready to face off with anybody that feels he or she is more capable of leading Nigeria. And so far, I've been doing a good job of it. I've been interviewed, I've been attacked, I've been at town halls, given questions that they talk, ah, they thought this one will bring her down. And I'm like, look, I was born for this. I was only timing it and pushing it forward. But now that the opportunity has come for me to step out, and now that I have stepped out, I am so certain that I'll be president in Nigeria. Speaking about being mocked and being ridiculed, what are some of the things that you've heard being said about you? Were there expressions against your, on your character, or were there things that were said because of your gender? Mostly because of my gender. Some people would tell you, I better go marry, go marry, have children, you know, get business for this kind of thing. And you're like, I have children. I am married. So even that I have, but that shouldn't have even been a reason to, you know, refuse to listen to me or refuse to get to know me or even refuse to think that there was a chance that I could do well leading Nigeria. So yes, you get ridiculed, you get abused, you get, ugh, you get told off a lot, even by your own family members. But the thing is, I am so ready. I mean, I've seen I've seen uh, aspirants to office around the world getting thrown uh, water, tomatoes, all sorts of things, and they still end up coming up, uh, becoming the presidents or the senators or whatever they are looking at. And I'm like, okay, that's part of the process, and deal with it. And I'm dealing with it, and I'm actually quite happy about the results that I've been getting so far. Uh, it's going from ridicule to a lot of acceptance. Like you find so many people, men, women, young people so happy to finally have somebody who really, really has the interest of every Nigerian at heart stepping out and then finally being a young woman. Everybody's like, oh my God, thank God, thank God. Now we have an opportunity to have something totally different and hopefully the opportunity to get out of the 
really, really bad place we have been in Nigeria for so long. Eunice, you seem very confident about winning the elections. You seem very confident about being president of Nigeria by 2019, but you're not the first. Sarah Dubil tried about four times. We had in the last elections, Remy Shonaya. What makes you feel you're different? And what makes you think Nigeria is ready for a female president? I am different because I communicate differently and I do know the um, importance of effective communication. You need to be able to carry the people along. Whether you're a man or woman, young or, or old, you have to be able to carry the people along. And if you do not master that skill to, when you come into a gathering, look at all the different opinions, look at all the different body languages and pick one that attracts all. If you cannot do that, you won't succeed to lead. But if you can do that, you have a very good chance. So um, I don't know the particular um, upbringing they had or the experiences they came with. It's a great thing that they at least tried. They, they saw the, the future a lot earlier than some of us or most of us. And they came in and they tried to make a difference. They tried to, tried to take the uh, bull by the horn. I am really, really happy that there were some women ahead of me. But I do know that I'm coming from a different perspective and my preparation was different in effect, uh, and the effect is going to be that I will be playing right at the center of it all, and I'll be playing with everybody, good, bad, ugly, and you will see that the moment I get the kind of power I'm looking for, things will start to change, not because the people have changed, but because they've realized that there's no other way to be than to be doing the right things all the time, because Eunice will not let you do things differently. All right, so now, Eunice, I'm sure you reckon that we have what we have with regards to female participation in politics and leadership is really nothing to write home about. I mean, in the 8th Assembly, we have just seven women who are there representing us as senators, seven out of 109 men. So we have 109 people, seven women, and the rest are men. Now, what would you say is a stumbling block? I mean, just about what are the stumbling blocks that prevent equal participation or sufficient participation of the female folk in politics and leadership in Nigeria? Um, firstly, I think um, a lot of us women expect that it to be handed down to us. We think because there are too few of us in there, um, they will give it to us. It will never happen. You've got to go in there and fight it out with them. Nobody will give you the opportunity. You've got to go in there and take it. And it's only when you are in there and fighting that they will start to see, oh my God. No, 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 no. Some people will be like, okay, I have to work for the benefit of this person, she's ha she has something to offer. But if you sit down there and you make an announcement and then you do nothing thereafter, we are not going to have those opportunities. We're not going to be sitting there because nobody's going to be really fighting for us to be there. We have to step out. We have to step into the ring. We have to step into the mud. We have to get dirty and then come out and then clean up on the other side. You know, So we don't have a lot of women in the top, 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 or even the bottom parts of politics in Nigeria because... I think the women are not trying hard enough. You know, you don't come out and then because it's so hard, you give up and you go away. No, you come out, it's so hard, you keep pushing and you push until you get through because you can't get through. It may take you long, it may take a lot of energy, it may take a lot of resources to break your heart, it will cost you a lot of tears, but you've got to get through. As long as you know the only way is forward, you will get through. And as long as we have more women prepared to go the length, we will get many in power. Now, this support you're talking about that we, more women need to have or, you know, more women need to have to be able to participate in politics. Are, this, are you talking about support from women? You know, there's this phrase of women not supporting women. I'm sure you'd be able to talk about it personally. How has the journey been for you? Have you gotten a lot of support from women? I have, I have support from women. I have support from men. I have support from young. I have support from old. I can't even tell which one is more. I can't. I think I actually have more support from men than from women, but I don't think it's because um, women don't want to support women. I think it's because women are more careful in making their decisions. Women will not support a woman just because she's a woman. I won't do that. I want to see the quality of woman that is presenting herself for office. I want to understand what she has to offer what she would do differently, so that women are not supporting women. It's not a blanket situation where women hate each other. I don't think that at all. I don't subscribe to that um, opinion. I rather think the women are much more careful in picking who they back, and they need to see that you have much more to offer than just being a woman. So 
I do have a lot of woman, women. I have a woman who actually gave up her job to come and be my communications wow. manager. And she is amazing. Like, she's so amazing. And I'm like, oh my God, I mean, I can't even thank her enough because I don't even have money to pay her. But she's ready to work. And she believes so much in my campaign that she's telling me, don't worry, you will see for yourself. When they see the quality of leadership you're offering us in Nigeria, money won't be your issue. All right. Eunice, you would, as a woman yourself, yes. beyond women being in leadership, women generally in Nigeria, what are some of the challenges and the stumbling blocks that you've seen, the stereotypes that society has leveled against women? We've seen situations where, of course, we know that in the current administration, people attack the president for saying that, you know, your you place is in the, the other room. So what are some of all the other stereotypes that you've seen that have been holding women, Nigerian women, from being the best that they can be? And how can we combat these stereotypes, religious, cultural? cultural, you know, and otherwise. Nigerian women are absolutely amazing women. I tell you that free of charge. However, the culture does have a major, major impact on our ability to just express ourselves and do the things we want to do. Your husband would not want you to because he feels threatened. If you get out there, another man might take you. Uh, your traditional rulers don't accept that women sit with the men or share kola knots or break kola knots or anything. You have cultures that won't let the women um, earn or um, inherit land or things like that. So you do have cultural um, issues, like cultures that hold us back. However, I think... It's changing. There's more awareness. Women are more aware of what their rights are. And more of us are coming out there to tell others, that, look, you don't have to take it. Look at what, where you are. Look at where you want to be. And if there are obstacles stopping you, fight. Because the law, actually, even our constitution tells you nothing. Nothing should allow anybody to treat you differently from the way they treat everybody else. Whether, not because of your gender, not because of your place of um, origin, not because of your religion. So you have to always fight for that which is yours because our culture will not let it come to you so easily. You know, there's so much we have to talk about, but we're very, very constrained for time. Okay. Finally, do you think you would win this election or do you, are you doing this for a publicity stunt, something to improve your profile? I believe I'll win the election. I am in this coalition uh, of the political parties, and what we have decided is that every political party would field their, like everybody that comes through the primaries will come to the center and battle it out. My job now is to make sure that I come as the presidential aspirant uh, from the National Interest Party, that's my political party. And then when I get to that center, make sure that I communicate effectively enough to allow that center back me. Once that center is backing me, Buhari is not just gone, Eunice is president in 2019. Okay, we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how this plays out. And we're definitely planning our own debate for all the presidential aspirants, and we hope to have you then, oh, where, where there will be an actual face-off and the Nigerian people can get to ask you all the questions that we, they want to ask you. But thank you very much for gracing us with your presence. Thank you. Thank you but for But this is quite me. encouraging, encouraging times to see women rising up to the times. And not just in America, where we had um, pres the, the presidential aspirant Hillary Clinton. We're seeing more women doing this in Nigeria, and more young women at that. So this is just a reminder that you can think it and then you can do it. Nothing shall stop you and no one should tell you that your dreams are too big for you to achieve. Now we have birthdays in history. So many amazing people. Happy birthday to Isaac Gerald, singer, songwriter, artist and a friend of mine, a childhood friend who has now become not just a husband but a father. Recently he became a dad. So happy birthday Isaac. We have Ali Ugiwa celebrating today. Happy birthday to him. We also have Iho Malinda Ejiofo, actor. Happy birthday Noso Diobi. Happy birthday. We have Onome Simpson. So Sojay born this day in history, a footballer. Happy birthday to him. And finally, okay, we also have Messi Nku born this day in history, 1976. Finally, today is World Day for International Justice, otherwise referred to as World Day for International Criminal Justice or the International Justice Day. And today is World Emoji Day. So before we wrap up the show, understand that you can follow us on all social media portals at Olive Emoji. Eunice, how can people follow you? You can follow me at... Eunice underscore at Day, all the socials, and then Facebook at Eunice for President. All right. So now, this is World Justice Day. Very quickly, World International Justice Day. You are a lawyer. Yeah. What does justice mean to you? Justice means treating everybody fairly, having everybody in front of the law equal. That's what justice means to me. Is that, and is Nigeria currently... Is justice as it ought to be no. operating in Nigeria? It's not. All people right, who are senators are treated better than people who are beggars on the street, and that's wrong.
Interesting. All right, let us know what your definition of justice is and the kind of justice you'd like to see in operation in our country, in Nigeria. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.